Hey guys, we're coming at you with part two to this video, the post serial cards. This is the 1962 set. We already did the 61. This will be like a two of three video, if you will. We're also announcing a partnership we have with GruntalksMLB.com. Darren is over there hosting my videos. Check him out when you get a chance. He's not paying me, I'm not paying him. And I love it that he has my videos over there posted. You can see my videos over there. Also, if you want to check out the latest in baseball, other sports too, mainly baseball, good videos. Thank you, Darren. Go check them out when you get a chance. So the 1962 set is actually the easiest one to collect if you're building a complete set because you didn't have the, the one-offs from the first year where you could only get them through the mail. And then you didn't have the ones in 63 where some of the rare cereal boxes only carried certain cards. And if the cereal was discontinued, you couldn't find that one. Also, this is the only year that Post made the American League cards blue and the National League cards red, just a little bit of design difference that they made. It's the only year that they put the Post logo on there as well, and I don't know why that is. So the 61 and the 63 don't have any Post logo on there, and that can lead to confusion if you're collecting Jello cards as well. They look just like these Post baseball cards. The Jello cards are a little bit different. I'm gonna talk about those real quick. They're a tiny bit smaller, and that can be hard to notice when you look at them because when kids are cutting these out, it can kind of change the size a little bit. So the, the Jell-O ones can be harder to keep separate. So if you can't tell which card is smaller, just look for the Post logo. If it doesn't have the logo, it's Jell-O. If it does, of course, it is a Post serial card. And card number five and six, that's Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris. Actually, those cards came out in an issue of Life Magazine where you could rip them out, they're perforated, and have them in there. So it's a little bit different card than the ones on cereal boxes because they have lines between the stats, whereas the box version does not have those lines. They're perforated, but there's one more thing that's different on the Roger Maris anyway. On the back, there's actually printing. And that's kind of cool because it's the only post serial card that has printing on the back of it. So these cards weren't as popular because they were, you know, blank on the back, of course. And I really like them because they're inexpensive compared to like, uh, Tops cards, you know, where you can get some inexpensive uh, Hall of Famers in their playing years without breaking the bank. Let's get started with these errors. We're going to move on to card number 14, Norm Cash. The error says he throws right, should be left. That one was corrected, though. Number 27, Jim Gentile. Home shows either Baltimore or San Lorenzo. So that's a variation. Ron Hansen, number 30. Line six says at bats with an apostrophe between them, or you can get the one without the apostrophe, at bats without an apostrophe. I don't know. They felt the need to come back and change that, whatever. Number 109, Sandy Koufax. Also Joey J, number 124. Obviously one is a little more well-known than the other. Uh, there is red or blue stat lines. The blue is much more rare on either one of those. Number 143, Stu Miller. It's actually an uncorrected error. That is not Stu Miller in the little picture there. That is a picture of Chuck Hiller. Number 145, Joe Adcock. They misspelled his last name. It says Adock, <laughs> but they did come back and correct that one. Number 153, Lou Burdett. Well, if you've seen any of these error lists for tops and posts, they can't seem to spell his first name correctly. It should be L-E-W, not L-O-U. That one was not corrected. Maz, Bill Mazeroski, number 170, uh, says that he played in the 1960 World Series. It should have been the 1959 that they were talking about. Roberto Clemente, number 173, a variation as it could have red or blue stat lines, just like the other two I mentioned earlier with the Sandy Koufax, the blue is much more rare. George Altman, number 187, there's no period or a closed parenthesis. So they left out the period and they had an open parenthesis, but not a closed one. There is a parallel to this set where they issued it in Canada, where it's pretty much the same cards, but they have the English and the French bio. And there's a couple issues with those French bios that we're gonna talk about. I don't speak French, so <laughs> it's gonna be hard to kind of explain, but I'll go through them real quick here. Number six, Roger Maris, the P and poor may or may not be capitalized, and the word residence, however you pronounce it, may be missing uh, from the card. Number nine, Whitey Ford. This is really cool. There's an error on this card where it says he's on the Dodgers, and I think that's just hilarious. If you are a, a Yankees fan, you're probably not a Dodgers fan also, and back then there was definitely a rivalry, and to see Whitey Ford 
listed as a Dodger. That's pretty hilarious. I don't have that card. I'd like to find me one. Um, Rocky Colavito. That's my all-time favorite player right there. Number 19. Last name could be in large or small letters. All right, moving on with the Canadian errors. Number 22, Frank Larry. The word residence may be missing from the French stats, just like that Roger Maris. Jim Gentile, number 27. Parte. Okay, again, I don't speak French. In the third line, maybe in the third line or the final line of the French stats. They just kind of came back and changed it. Those are just considered variations. A couple more errors, and those are date of birth. I'm not going to go through each one individually, uh, but I will say they're number 1, 12, 23, 37, 51, 95, and 168. Just had the wrong date of birth. Uh, notable mention is Minnie Minoso in that as a Hall of Famer. Had his birth date wrong as well. And that's the list of errors for the 1962 post set. Guys, I hope you're liking and subscribing. And uh, we got one more video of the 63 on the way. I'll probably put it out pretty close to this one. I'm going to do both filming at the same time, just like they did with Back to the Future 2 and 3. But anyway, where was I? So thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I hope you're liking and subscribing, and we'll see you next time. All right, let's get started. 1962 Tops. Also, this is the only year that Top 